Hey everybody, here's part two of assembling signature pages in a junk journal. Sorry, I accidentally hit the off button. Uh, so that's why we have part two. Okay, so here's the fabric cover that we're gonna be making. It's a hard cover, but it's covered in fabric. Um, and we're going to be inserting these signatures into this book using this hidden spine. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take four pieces of, this is waxed thread or waxed, um, uh, it could be linen thread, cotton thread, but this is, see a little stiffness to it, it's easy to work with with junk journals. Uh, you can also use embroidery floss or any other kind of thicker uh, thread so that you can have a secure um, junk journal. So we're gonna use the number three, three times the height of the book. One, two, three is gonna give you plenty of um, thread to use for one signature. I'm going to do that four times. Two, two, three, two, one, two, three. Hope you're all doing well today. We're all doing dandy over here. And this is number four. One, two, three. If I counted right. Let's see if I counted right. One, two, yeah, three, four. So we have four of these, approximately the same length. And we're gonna use a big eyed needle. Uh, I think you can get these in Walmart or anywhere. I recommend, um, this is a big eyed needle. Get a blunt end one so you don't poke yourself because you don't really need a sharp end on this needle. Um, darning needle, yarn needle, um, big eyed needle. It'll all go under those names. Okay, so we're not actually working with the cover at the moment, so we can put that aside. We're working with this hidden spine. I've got the top marked, and we're um, gonna thread the needle. Okay, and we're gonna start from the back of the book. So here's my signatures as they're gonna go in order. I'm gonna turn them over, because this is the back one. And I'm gonna go through the middle. This is the three-hole pamphlet stitch. And I'm gonna go to the dot, the dot, the hole, most to the right, in the middle. Hang on, I'm gonna make sure that this is the right way. Hmm. I think it's this way. There's my top marker. We're gonna stick with that one. Let me see how this is in the right spot. Then we're gonna go in the back of the one most to the right and through the center. And through the bottom. And then through the center one again. Okay, now we want these about even. And I want to make sure that this is going to sit okay. And it's okay if it's not exact exact because my my signature is exact. Okay, so that's going to work. All right, so what we're going to do is we have this the bridge and we have one wing on this side, one wing on the other. I'm going to pull it taut, tie it right over left, and then left over right. And then one more for good measure. Oh, that second one's always a little tricky because it's opposite of the way your hands want to normally tie a knot. And just pull that down. Okay, so that's the back one and it's on, it's in place. Okay, so this is the next one. Um, I've got my big needle. This is the three hole pamphlet stitch I'm dem demonstrating here and it works well for most size journals. It's a good, easy stitch to do. Through the middle, through the second last hole, through the second last top hole, through the top hole, through the bottom hole. Don't get stuck here. That's a common thing. Okay, well, make sure your tail, don't lose your tail. Don't lose your tail. Through the back 
middle or the back bottom hole and then up through the center again through the center of the signature make sure you go in the right place and let the back out through there okay and then come through and then make sure you are approximately even threaded and then you're going to pull it tight but not tearing right over left left over right and then one more for good measure all right pull that down okay now we're going to train these papers a little bit get them to go one way which is good everybody seems to be lining up well good okay second last signature needle thread thread the needle come on Pam this is the biggest eye known to mankind you can do it okay through the center hole the second center hole the second top hole through the top hole of the signature through the bottom hole of the signature and the bottom center hole don't get stuck on this don't get stuck on this okay that happens all the time and then through the middle hole of the second row yet again coming through don't thread the thread make sure you stay the threads are independent of each other I have threaded the thread this happens a lot so what you want to do did I thread the thread yes I threaded the thread so you want to unthread the thread. You want to separate them. Easiest to go at the base. There we go. And just unthread them. You don't want those to be locked together because that means you won't have a nice smooth knot. Okay. Make your threads somewhat even. Okay, there we go. Left over right, right over left, left over right, pull and down. Okay, now we only have one more row to go. This goes relatively quickly. Okay, and as it goes straight, we have a nice block forming here. Very nice, everything is looking good. The last one, we are going in. We have our needle, oops, sorry, we have our thread. We're going to now go through the middle, go through the first middle hole in this hidden spine, the top hidden hole, and the top hole in the signature. Make sure you come through the, the center of the pages. Yep. There we go. And the bottom. And then the last hole here. And let's see, I got stuck. Be careful, that, that doesn't happen. Okay. And then through the middle, and through the middle hole. Did I thread it again? I think I threaded it again. I feel like I did. Am I through? No, I didn't. Okay, we're good. All right, so that part actually comes together relatively quickly. If all goes well, snug, pull snug under the bridge, one on either side, one wing on either side, left over right, right over left, and then left over right okay mm -hmm. and then close it and now what we've essentially made is a signature block okay so we have this lines up nicely lines up nicely lines up nicely okay now we're going to take this and we're going to glue it in to here okay it's going to fit very nicely see how nice that is it's really nice and um, it's a little bulky up here. Let me glue this down a little bit more. For some reason, my, my gluing expertise didn't go so well when I was gluing the fabric in there, but I want to tuck that in there so there's no impedance. And we don't want impedance. Nothing to get in the way. All right. Now, this is the top. This is the top. That's going to go with the top of our book. If you have text here, make sure that's in the right upright position. We're going to snuggle this baby into where we want it to be. It's going to fit well. We're feeling good about it. Now we're going to apply what I call a lot of glue for junk journaling. Okay, doing a little snaky back and forth maneuver. I really want this to hold well. It's adhering to fabric. This is Fabrifix, clear silicone glue. It's going to glue fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, and paper to paper. 
and you are now making your book look like a real book. Okay. I don't have to finger smoosh it because we're not worried about bleeding through issues there. What was I going to do? I was reaching for something for some reason and I don't remember what it was. Okay. That's okay. I got all my tails at the bottom and I'm going to place this inside here. Easiest to do standing up, I think. Okay. It's very good. Very good. I probably could have even cut it a little narrower. I'm always nervous when I'm cutting it. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to, you want to take that. Sometimes it's helpful to use your uh, ruler to push it down in there well. Because you, what you want to do is adhere that piece of signature, not signature, piece of hidden spine to the back wall. Oh, I was going to show you the Fabrifix spot one play. If there's anybody out there in the world that has not seen Fabrifix glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. Um, yep. And it's, uh, I, I transfer it into an Us Sugar Bells icing piping bottle just for ease of use. Um, okay, get in there. This would be better if I had my glasses on, but I don't. So I'm pushing that in that spine down right at the back wall of that hidden spine into the spine of the book. Okay. You can use your hands to manipulate it a bit. What you're trying to do is approximate here, back, and here, back. I'm going to push it down as much as possible. Okay. Make sure that it's aligned correctly. Okay. In there. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, everything is looking good. Okay, and when you get it really in there, make sure it's really in there. Um, push it in there as much as possible. Okay, that looks pretty good. It looks, looks like it's in there. You can give it one last good, real good, strong shove in there. <laughs> and then maybe you can grab your bulldog clips and clip this down just to hold it. Okay. Okay. I have a migrating signature. That's okay. Because where these babies adhere is where they're going to live. Okay. And here. There. Okay. So now that's pushing that down nicely. Yep. Yeah, that spine is gluing in there nicely. I'm going to shove it back even more if you can. If you see there's a space, try and make sure there's no space. And then that is nicely, whoops, so that is nicely contained in your book. Okay, I'm going to maybe move this one over a little bit. Move these over a little bit. So spread them out a little bit more. It's okay, you can do that. Mm hmm And I really don't need these uh, paper clips anymore, so I will just go ahead and remove them. They're just taking up extra space in there. So I've oh, got two for one special. Boy, that's rare. Um, I get a bonus like that. Just remove these. And this is also a good time. If you're of interest, if you wanted to color these or if you want to shave them down just a little bit more, you can do that if you had your sanding block. Let's say it's stuck out a little bit and you're still not happy for some reason. You can come along and sand this puppy until it fits all nice and flush inside your junk journal. And that look, it just leaves the nicest, softest feel. I think the top is pretty good, but we'll just get an extra rub and buff. Just to say we did. There. Oh, oh, like butter, like butter. And um, if you want... You can apply some gilding paste there. And I think for some reason, I don't know, maybe I'm going to do silver with this one as opposed to gold because just of the colors that are in the, because of the colors that are in the front, it's more of a muted silvery kind of color. Let me, let me just try. This is silver gilding wax. I'll see how this goes. Am I going to get some good silverage here? Not sure. 
Never been a big fan of the silver one for some reason, but let's see how it goes here. Oh, that looks kind of nice. Looks more of like a gray than a silver, but we'll see. Let's see what we get. Okay. Does age the the edges of the book a little bit more. So I do kind of like that. And now that the book pages are all compressed like this, it's a nice opportunity to do that because we don't always get that opportunity once the pages are starting to become decorated. It's very difficult to get them together like this again. So if you're going to do any kind of this aging technique, you may want to do it at this point. Just a little bit. Okay, do I'm going to do this too? Sure, why not? Let's put a little in there. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Gray silvering them down a little bit. I'm starting to see a little more of the silver edge of this stuff. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we have that. Very nice. So that's the top of our book, the edges, the bottom of our book, and we have these tails, which I'm going to leave long right now because I'm not quite sure if I'm going to attach something to the tail or remove the tails, but I think that's a, a good way to approach it. Um, now, odds are this is probably glued enough but I'm going to let it sit for a couple hours and maybe even overnight because I think that will behoove, behoove us. And um, that's a good thing to do. Now, in the meantime, maybe we're going to want to make um, a few more of those pockets we made the other day because I would like to possibly add some of those to, I'm going to do three, there's four signatures in here. Let's pull out four of those pages. We just have a little extra time today, so... This is the, uh, the frigate constitution of the Heartthrobs book. No idea what that means, but I love the book. And we're going to go up like that, making a square. Up like this, making the boat. We're going to come up to here where the fold is. And then we're going to take this, fold it back. But then we're going to flip it back this way and tuck it into that little flapperoonie. And then we have a nice little pocket. I'm going to do that a few more times. And that's going to give us some fun little pocketness to work with. Actually, maybe we could do different things. Maybe we could do a different kind of pocket and eat signature. That might be fun. So let's do this. Let's grab this. We can get rid of some of this white area. I do like the tearing look on this. That looks really pretty. And, okay, so we're going to make a pocket here, and then maybe bring that down here, and that's going to give us a lower, and that's going to upright this text, which is kind of cool, if you think about it. That was a kind of cool maneuver, just some different pocketage we can play with. Let's get the, uh, maybe let's use the black. If she's really smart. She'll be able to find her black dauber because she had it out earlier. And where did it go? Nobody knows. Where is it? Is it in the little dauber house? No, of course not. That would have been way too easy. So, what should we just use? Oh, there it was hiding behind the crocodile. Who knew, right? Just grabbing this one. This is black soot ink, hard to read, but black soot distress ink. It's a kind of a fun way to make some decorations for a junk journal. Just grab four pages from one book, make them all up the pockets just a little bit different from each other. And then you can um, have some fun with it. We could even, I don't know, let's just leave that as that. Um, okay. That, 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 uh, in there, and then you here, and you here. Okay. All right, we have that. All right, now we want to put.
put something on there. Maybe, maybe some stamps. There's some glue stamps. That would be nice. This is a nice little stamperoonie. That might look cute there, like that. This might be a sticker or something. I'm not quite sure what this is, but I think it's really cute. And we'll put that there. All right. And then maybe we'll get a little bit of a decoration or buttonage or something. We're gonna. Oh, we do have a lot of buttons out here. We have a lot of buttons. Oh, this is kind of cool. Grab a small collection of buttons. I have no idea what I have. So maybe we'll use them for decorating purposes. Maybe we'll put you at the top. You're kind of cool. This is an old, uh, feels like a shell button. Probably Victorian age, I would imagine. I did buy some old ones. It might be more newer than that, but I think that looks kind of cool right there. And then maybe we'll just put some side buttons for a little extra decoration. Okay, that's cute. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, ooh, yeah, okay, there we go. Orient that. And this one's kind of cool. All right, there you go. All right, so we'll let this one dry. We'll decorate this one. Okay, so maybe we'll do a button theme in here, but since we have some buttons here, these are very thin. Oh, these are little pretty buttons. Aren't these pretty buttons? Can't pick this button up. Why? Why can't I pick it up? You must be picked, picked up. Okay, there you are. Oh, a shell button. Very nice. Maybe one more button. Maybe a little white button. Very cute. Okay, we'll use these buttons. And maybe we'll come with the black again. Okay. Come down this side. Come around the bottom. A little bit there. And maybe we'll just amplify this pocket a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Whoop, so we have that. I do have this, which is a stamp. Um, it's a Norman Rockwell stamp. I think these stamps are so good, but we'll just use them. So I think that will look really pretty on there. And you could use regular glue or glue stick or whatever you like. I think I'm going to put you there. Okay. And then these little buttons I might put along this opening. Okay. I'll tell you one, two, three. Okay. So he's the biggest. Put you there. Okay. Put a little baby up here. Okay. Little middle sized mama down there. And um, I think I want a little bit more pizzazz on this one. Oh, oh, oh. Let me get that stencil again. I'm going to go over this area, not on the stamp so much. Well, maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I'll go right over the stamp to see what that does. I don't know at this point what it will do. We'll just try and leave some of the stamp. Uh, I got the stamp. It's okay. That's kind of cool. There we go. A little decorated thing. And this is a brown aquarelle stabilo, aquarelle, aquarellable Stabilo pencil. 8045. I think I'm just going to do some connecting here. Just drawing in some slight extras. It's okay, you can do that. You're allowed, it's yours, your work. Okay, I do like that. Little extras, little fun things that you can do with your embellishments. I don't think I'm gonna add any water to that, I'm just gonna leave it as is. And that's number two. And let's grab another page and see what else we can make with this one. And these are just fun things that we can do. Okay, so then there is, um, let's narrow it up a bit. Can you see? Okay. Just getting the text block here. 
can always do something with the text block. And these pages, that we can definitely do something with those. Okay, I have an idea. I have, this is going to be, we're gonna use all these strange little pieces in this one. All right, so we have this one. Maybe we're gonna go around the outside of it. So you could just have nothing more than one book and just come up with lots of ways to use um, the pages in a book if you like to do that in your junk journal. And see how this goes. All right, so we have that. And then we have these striped things. Now we can do multiple things with this, but what I think I'd like to do is possibly make turn it into like a little, a little, a little jail cell. But maybe we're going to make these dark. Let's grab this, and maybe we're going to split this one in half. Let's mark it up first. Just using the residue that is on the dauber to give it a. A darker look, darker than the, the paper, so it's going to pop. And there, now we're going to tear this in half. It's going to give us two of these. So now suddenly we have three. We're going to make these all the same height. And then I'm gonna go from there to about there, trim them off there, give that little end a little bit of darkness. Maybe this end, whoops, a little bit of darkness. Okay, now we're gonna give our fabric fix. And maybe, well, I don't know where these are supposed to start. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. So we have one. I'm just trying to put them equidistant. There's one. There's two. And here's three. I'm trying to show the heartthrobs word there so it can still show. I'm come along here and what I've made basically is a triple belly band, which will house a nice little piece of ephemera. And then we can glue this whole structure onto one of the pages, which will be fun. And since we're here and we can still decorate these things a little bit, we do have a second here to orient them correctly. Um, I think I'm gonna grab the stickles and copper. Okay. Can you see? Down up, 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 and guess what? Down up, down up, down up, down. These are so easy to do, but they're so much fun. And they do add a lot of pizzazz. Maybe do three at the top, at the top, like little, they look like little rivets. Rivets? We can speak. They are rivets. We have rivets in the building. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have now this. Okay, be careful when you're picking it up. Um, so this is open underneath of all these three, and we can tuck something in there and glue this whole thing to a page. Um, you could also make multiple pockets out of that, but there you go. That's an example of what you can do with that one. And we have one more here. We'll just do something fun with this little baby since we're here. I had a lid to this, and it didn't go far. Here it is. Here it is right there. Okay. All right, so. I will do something like this. We'll make it into a little house. A little house. There we go. This one is a little house. Um, we could do a door. We could do a little barn door. It says we have enough to do a barn door, so let's do that. Okay. 
Okay. Okie dokie, kind of barn door look. Down here. Okay, barn door, barn door. Oh, okay, we didn't get it cut right even. That happens sometimes. Well, not all barn doors are even. Sometimes they do have a little bit of a an angle to them. So we'll just, we'll go with that. Okay, we're going to glue that there. All right. Okay. I'm going to take a barn door here. That's pretty good. And maybe we're going to amplify this with a Stabilo pencil a little bit. Yeah. You could also use colored marker here. It would be fine. Colored marker. You could use markers. Yes, you could. But you could also use colored pencil. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. A little door. Door thing here. A door thing here. Just sticking across a little bit. And make these a little bigger. Some kind of strange door mechanism. There. And uh, where's the brown? There. And this brown, I'm going to wet that a little bit. Okay. I feel like this house is a little wide on this side. Maybe we're going to take some of this house off. Make this whole house a little smaller. And then we have all this extra stuff to play with for this house. Um, let's brown it up. Okay. Now, oh, we could build a little roof, couldn't we? We totally could. Maybe we want to make these brown. Oh, it's gonna have ink all over the house here. Look, literally, all over the house. Okay. Well, maybe we'll, we'll build a roof line. That would be a roof line. And we need this to be a bit of a roof line. Okay. Fold it back upon itself. Oh, not bad. Doesn't have to be perfect. Could be better than that though, hey. All right, there we go. That's the piece that's not playing correctly. Um, okay, so we're gonna go across here. Okay, there we go. A little roof line in place. Okay, so we have that. So maybe now we need a window. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or maybe just some window baskets. I don't know. We think we do need a window. Maybe we can draw the windows. How about that? Very, very whimsical. We've entered the world. Okay. Now maybe we need a window box. Yes, that would be very nice. A window box. Yep. Window box. Now we're just going to use the scissors and get the window box of our dreams. There we go. And maybe we will cut one out that looks like this one. Dramatically similar. Amazingly so. Okay, here we go. Window box. And we're doing a little Bavarian window box. Two of them in here. Here, that's going to be very nice, yes. 
blue. And a glue. All right, it's going well, it's going oh so well. Did you know how well this is going? This is going fantastically. Okay, here we go. Got our window boxes in place. Now I think we need a little flower or two to come into the window box realm. Move that over a little bit. Should we get the, let's get a Q-tip and see what happens. Let's just do it. All right, I have one. All right. And the water, water cup, instant water cup, Q-tip, blooming, and more water, oh, wet, wet, wet Q-tip, okay. And that gives you kind of that smoky window look, you know, it's like it's smoky, foggy, old fashioned window, old glass look. And even sort of fill it in with the extra color. Look at that. That looks really cool now. Now we're having fun. Oh, yeah. We've ventured off into fun land. It happens. It happens in this world. It does. Okay. Wiping on the shorts. Okay. I Yes. Okay. We'll run around here, too, since it's wet. That looks very good, too. I like that. Yep. Yep. Down the center. Yep. A little bit across there, not too much, just a little. All right, there we go, and now we have a house. I know it's quite deep, um, but it is our house, and we it will fit in our book. I believe so. We might have to do some trimming. Um, but there is our book, our house of book page. So we've made our signatures in the book. And in addition to that, we've made four quickie little embellishments from four book pages very quickly and very easily. They're very fun to do. So I hope you had fun. And uh, who, oh yeah, of course he has something to say. He always, he's like, um, oh, oh, oh boy. I just realized none of that recorded. Oh boy. Ma. Okay. So, maybe it did. Maybe it did record with the microphone. Let's hope. Let's hope. I just didn't have the thingy in, but maybe, maybe it recorded. We'll just take a chance. All right, Sunny, come here. You might have something to say, or you're gonna have something to say about this. Okay, first of all, I would like to say, hello, it's Sunshine, Cub Pup Reporter, reporting from the the paper outpost, we're not sure if we're mic'd or not, but we're here and we're present and we're carrying on. And we're hoping that there's sound crossing our toes and tails. Love you all. Happy crafting. Okay, thank you very much. Well, there you go, folks. Um, you, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. Uh, you get a bunch of freebies and interesting information from the Paper Outpost. It's listed down below if you're looking for the link. I have an Etsy shop where I sell uh, journals and bundles and kits. Right now I have a fabric pack and fundals for sale, which are collections of old and interesting paper. Fabric pack is fabric. And um, I have a print and mail service. If you like uh, printable, uh, um, printable images that you can cut out and use in your junk journals that you print out at home, um, uh, if you, I have a print and mail service if you don't like to print, so check those out. I have an Amazon shop. If you see me use favorite tools and supplies here, you can find them on there. I have a t-shirt shop if you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise. And um, you can find me on interest, interest, pin, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. Boy, I sure hope this audio is working. And remember that fun can be simple. Da, 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 da. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.